I love architecture. I love figuring ways to make set pieces more intricate into the action. And John Wick just gives the opportunity to let loose a little bit and help create something that's original. Our sets are incredible. Kevin Cavanaugh and his team designed some really amazing sets. They're all spectacular. Two, we did a mirror room, and three, we have this insane glass house that was a multi-million dollar set, which had to be designed by engineers, and it's just a logistical nightmare. So we thought the coolest place to hide ninjas was a place that you can't hide anything, which is an entire house made out of glass. I think it's a very good reference to ninjas and what they can do optically and hide their presence. When we first got in there, like, the sets weren't built yet. We can kind of visualize it. Chad actually had the set built VR. Luckily, I was able to have a VR department that we were able to design the set in virtual reality. This is the art department for John Wick 3. Originally, these sets were 2D concept art, just drawings. Normally, the typical thing that we do in film is create a model. We'll stand around that model and view it. And then we kind of took all that data and brought it into the computer and, and then actually have digital versions of them that we can explore before even one nail gets hammered on the actual physical sets. So I was able to design a couple ideas and have Chad come into the art department and put on the VR goggles and see if he liked some ideas that we were experimenting with. And have the stunt coordinator come in and the lighting, Dan Lauston, come in and talk about lighting. So the virtual reality was a big part in the design aspect of the set. The ideal situation for this is to have something like this on a sound stage and being able to walk, explore, and plan out your scenes. We had to work simultaneously with the stunts and some of the action sequence that happens there. This is reflected on how big actually one of the floors are. This allows us to design action without actually having to be on the actual practical set. Coming into these virtual sets early allows us to make any changes or modifications. So if everyone's happy, we can actually make the practical set to all our specifications. Chad had me put on these VR glasses, and he had the whole set in there. So I got to walk it virtually and listen to him talk about what he wanted to do. You can actually go into these scenes and you can build them on the actual sound stages and see what they'll look like. Cut to months later, we're actually shooting the scene and I'm part of it. Once it was built and we scouted it and then we started looking at it and then they started lighting it and brought it up, it was stunning. I mean, it's just a stunning set piece. The glass house is amazing, that, that design of that set, and that's led with only LED lights. I think we MC more or less New York for thousands of feet of LED lights. And that's a fantastic studio build as well. The glass house is also very expensive. It's not only for a set, but like real a building. It's more of an upgrade to the mirror room, where you kind of see the reflections and see what's going on. This one is like, you can't see anything. Just getting to where we were supposed to fight was a little bit challenging because of all the glass. A couple people actually ran into the glass and I always made sure to put my hand out, my foot out first because I wasn't sure. It's very spooky, but very cool. So we tried to put, how does a ninja hide in a glass house and kind of create that problem for ourselves? The fact that we could still do it practically without VFX helping us out and how to hide all these guys within a house completely made of glass was what we wanted to do. We're playing a lot with the optical illusions, using the lighting and all the reflections and refractions from the glass. Because of certain practical lighting effects and camera angles, we could hide the guys throughout the glass house. And that's a combination between you and VisFX and practical effects, because they have a lot to do. They got to raise reflections and try to shoot so we don't see the reflections. We wanted to utilize the glass house as much as possible, so we took that fight and went through every inch of that floor. What would you do when you fight in a glass house? Be careful not to break anything, but in this case, everything's going to break. So it will uh, break while the action. For us, it's also very interesting how we will do while the real uh, shooting. When you have glass and lots of stunt guys and someone like Chad, you can't wait to start breaking glass and the ideas of what that would look like. So we're about ready to get into some serious glass shattering for the next couple days. Anytime you go through glass, there's all these injuries that can happen. Even though the rig it, you're gonna get cut. That's just another bill. You're, no matter what, you're gonna get cut. You're, you're getting glass in your eye. There's so many things involved. It's a lot of practical effects. We uh, did a lot of testing with tempered glass, half-inch thick tempered glass. And we have different methods for different stunts that take place. Some of it's thinner, some of it's thicker, depending on what the action is. 
some of it doesn't break at all, and these guys get slammed into it, so it can't break. Depending on what the stunts are and what we come up with, we have to kind of move left or right, depending on what the stunt requires. We had a special effects team actually use pyro to shatter all this glass, and then we could only do that one time because the reset time is so significant. Total glass stunts in general, I think it was around 10 or 11. First take, we were like, yeah, let's just destroy as much as we can. Yeah, it was just so much glass. At least they weren't mirrors, so I don't have to worry about luck or anything. Oh, that's right, we broke through the ground. Wick picks up the Chet Chap fireman carries. Chet Chap, he lands on the glass. I felt bad for the stunt guy that I had to do it to, because we did it like five times. And then, so what we did was we were all in wires. And then we took the glass away, so we're just hanging there. And also a throwback to the first movie when Daniel Bernhardt throws me over the balcony in the red circle. Pretty much just hung us, and then it's called a three ring, which we pull a tag and you just fall. And it was probably about nine or 10 feet, just straight to the ground. And it was so painful. <laughs> I said to Chad already, after finish with the movie, how they will do with the building. So Chad yes. said, we throw it. For us, it looks like real building. How oh, cannot uh, just sell to someone who want to collect? <laughs> Any project made by filmmakers that love film, you're going to see it. You have a group of people that not just love what they do, but love the type of movies that we're making. And that's why people put in the extra work. And I think that's why people on their day off come to the stunt rehearsals. Because not only do they want to be a part of it, they want to be better at what they do. You know, the cameramen not just want to get there and get the shot. They want to get there, get the shot, and know so that the next time they work, they'll have more experience. They want to be part of the process. From our nondescript stuntmen all the way up to our doubles, to our cameraman, to our cinematographer, to myself, to our cast. When everyone sees everyone working hard, you want to work harder. I'll catch up to you, John. No, you won't.